Good morning. It's Thursday and Coffee with Clark. It's always good to be in the Word with you guys on a daily basis. We all need the Word daily. Uh, the psalmist says, I word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. So if you start your day with something like this, devotion, reading scripture, sometime during your day you're going to find you're anchored in reality and the power of God versus what the world is communicating to you, especially in these days through the media that is so uh, stressful. But uh, he's now speaking to us about the importance of not being involved in legalism. And legalism is something that brings and promotes guilt trips. You never can fulfill legal mandates and the energy of your human ability. And Christ has set us free from the law of sin and death. Uh, Christ is not a legalist. He's, a, he's one who uh, promotes and teaches and manifests grace in our lives. That word experience and then give grace to other people. In verse 11 it says, In him you were also circumcised with the circumcision made without hands by putting off of the body of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ. So they had physical circumcision as a sign of the covenant in the Old Testament for the Jewish people. Uh, it was just a sign that they were united together with God through the uh, circumcision of the flesh. But reality is that no circumcision can make any of us a child of God. It's a ritual. Uh, so in the New Testament, the New Covenant, it talks about circumcision of the heart where God gives us a new heart. He takes out a heart of uh, the stone, heart of flesh, and, and gives us his heart of flesh, which is of the Spirit. Um, and so we, we begin, to, begin uh, to be more like Jesus because of his life in us. And he said, we're buried with him in, in which you also were raised with him through faith in the working of God who raised him from the dead. So in the New Covenant, really the um, identity of a new life or a changed life isn't physical circumcision. It's the uh, sacrament or act or rite of baptism after you become a believer where you're identifying with Jesus by being baptized in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, signifying that you've committed your life to Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. And now you are part of a new race, basically, a born-again people and not living as a pagan anymore. And so the importance of baptism, and, and the picture of baptism represents when we go into the water that we died with Christ in our sin. He took our sin and we're buried with him in baptism, the old life, and then we're raised with him out of uh, the water, representing resurrection, new life. If any man's in Christ, is a new creation. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. In verse 13, you being dead in your trespasses and the uncircumcision of your flesh, that's what it was like when we were lost. He has made alive together with him. We've been made alive together with Christ, who's forgiven you of all trespasses. Jesus has forgiven us of everything. And that's hard to fathom, that anything we've ever done in the past or have done in the present or could do in the future has been completely wiped out by the blood of Jesus Christ and him imputing or crediting to us his righteousness, him taking our sin and giving to us his righteousness. And he said it in verse 14, having wiped out the handwriting of requirements that was against us, which was contrary to us. So the law, the Ten Commandments, we've broken every one of those things, every one of us, uh, whether it's in thought or action. And all those things were listed that we've broken God's law, handwritings of ordinances, the law. And so we were accused, we were judged, we were um, condemned because of our sin. And there was only one way of those things being wiped out, and that was through what Christ has done for us on the cross. It says, and he has taken it out of the way, having nailed it to the cross. So all that judgment against you and me was nailed to the cross of Jesus Christ. And whenever Christ died for us, those things are not held against us anymore if we believe and trust in Christ. But you have to believe and trust. You have to be born again in order to appropriate this wonderful, marvelous grace and gift of forgiveness of sins. Verse 15, it says he's disarmed, having disarmed principalities and powers. That's all the forces of hell and darkness that are against the human race and against people. When you're born again, he's disarmed those principalities and powers 
and he's made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them in it. So Satan thought at the cross he had Jesus when he died. That was it. Didn't have to deal with him anymore. He wasn't aware that Christ would and did uh, raise again from the dead. And at that point, any power that Satan thought he had in the sense of keeping mankind lost and hellbound was completely annihilated and destroyed. And now through the power of the gospel, people are set free from the law of sin and death. That's good news, isn't it? Spread it around to people. We'll catch you tomorrow. Thank you.